the hangar that you're in right now is a World War II hangar. It was built in 1942. There were three hangars like this on what was then uh, the Army Airfield here at uh, San Marcos. This is the last remaining World War II hangar here. And we're one of the few World War II hangars in the United States that's still actively uh, maintained and actively used. The Central Texas Wing became involved uh, in 1974. This is our 40th year anniversary of being established as a Central Texas Wing. We are a living history museum. Uh, you don't come in and just see the things sitting here. You, we actually fly them and you can fly in them so that you can see what it was like, what our, our veterans back in World War II and Korea in those, those early days, what they went through and what they put up with to fly their missions. The air shows that we go to, we ask for a fee if we can get it or to cover our gas expenses to go. Uh, we have donation boxes here in the hangar for people to donate. Uh, we have three major fundraisers during the year. We do a casino night and car show in the springtime. And then we do a dinner dance in November here at the hangar. And we usually have uh, 1,000 to 1,200 people in the hangar here doing that. We all have unique uh, skills or talents. Some fly, some maintain, some can fix up the hangar, wood, wood work. It's really a fun place to be. Our membership is growing up uh, as people find out what we've got here. And we get the word out in the Central Texas region as to what tourist attraction we have here in San Marcos. We all come in for whatever reason we come in and uh, join the Commemorative Air Force. Uh, we get a lot of former military, uh, we get law enforcement, but it's not a requirement. Uh, we've got a lot of just off the street people. Fortunately, I have a very good volunteer uh, group here. We train them to whatever level they want to go to, uh, learning to work on the planes. Uh, we don't push anybody to do any more than they, they want to do, but uh, we get enough people in here, uh, we're able to keep things moving pretty well. Uh, we have a dozen or so different planes in different classes here. Uh, we've got everything from trainers to a bomber and a very rare fighter. Uh, probably our P-39, which is one of only two in the world that's still flying. But the rarity of the plane now, uh, being it's a uh, very limited number, uh, makes it kind of uh, a big deal. The bomber we have is a Mitchell, North American Mitchell B-25 bomber, uh, the same type that was used by the Doolittle crew in the raid on Japan. We have it painted up in honor of a crew that was killed in Italy, World War II. But uh, we're blessed here to have some very good pilots. Uh, it, it's a real honor to work with them and for them. And uh, it's, it's up to them once uh, we hand it over to them, they've got to take it into the sky and they've got to bring it back in one piece. Well, we come from many varied backgrounds. Uh, there are some of us that are retired uh, military, retired Navy, retired Air Force, and the hours vary from a, f a few hundred to tens of thousands of hours. And uh, we all have something to, uh, to contribute and, uh, and learn from one another. Uh, we're all volunteers and we're all colonels. There is no rank structure. Um, our, our leader uh, who's uh, giving us direction is elected for two years, but he's a leader, he's not a commander. And that fosters the cooperative atmosphere and uh, it's, it's one of contribution and uh, you can contribute as much or as little as you like and you can make whatever it you like. Well, we have a pretty eclectic gathering of airplanes. Most of them are World War II era airplanes. And we have uh, the good fortune to have two of the airplanes that were used to make the movie Tora, Tora, Tora back in the late 60s. Uh, we have a Zero and a B5 and 2 Kate. Uh, both of those airplanes reside in the hangar. The Zero is privately owned, and the Kate is also a, a commemorative Air Force aircraft uh, and part of a sponsor group of the team that uh, does the reenactment of the attack on Pearl Harbor. When the veterans that visit us, uh, they come in, and, and so many of them, because of, of their age, um, are in perhaps a wheelchair or using a walker and and you can just see it in their eyes when they uh, they walk through that hangar door and they see the type of airplane that they uh, did their training in and then the uh, b-25 or the p-39 uh, perhaps that they that they actually flew in combat flew in harm's way 
and uh, all those memories, you can see them come flooding back, and uh, they, they get real quiet, and it's, uh, it's an experience, and it's a pleasure to be able to escort them around the airplane, help them up in it if they, if they have that much strength, and, uh, and listen to them tell their stories. You know, they, they open up and, uh, and talk about it, and so many of them can remember facts and numbers. You know, I can't remember what I had to eat yesterday, but you know, they're, they're talking about altitudes and headings and bomb loads and things from 60 years ago. It's truly amazing. The paid rides uh, are done in the, uh, in the B-25, and we call those uh, living history flight experience rides. And um, you just uh, go to our website, uh, you can sign up there, get on the waiting list, and then we bundle the people together. We have seven seats, uh, so it'll be 10 people on the airplane, uh, two pilots and a flight mechanic. And uh, the ride takes 20 to 25 minutes. Once airborne safely, we, uh, we let you move around the airplane. So regardless of where you were initially seated, you will have an opportunity to go up to the nose or back to the tail. It does take a certain amount of dexterity to transit from the front to the back, but it, it can be easily done. It's a, it's a great time. People really come back with an amazing appreciation for what, uh, what those men and women did for us. We, uh, we put a lot of time in on the planes, and we go to great lengths to keep them going, keep them looking good. And uh, at the air shows, when uh, granddad comes up with his grandchildren, I get choked up. <laughs> uh, that's what does it for me makes it worth it. You want to step back in time, come through our doors. And when you walk through that door out there, uh, from the outside you may not realize, but when you step in and you see these airplanes and what we have here in the museum, the library, uh, you realize you, you were back in the 40s, 50s, because that's what we have here.